Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this week's video we're going to jump into Photoshop and take a look at how we can create a double exposure effect using these two images. Now double exposures are the kind of thing that used to be done in the darkroom but they've become very very popular recently and I'm going to take you step by step through the process of creating your own. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Now before you start, there's a couple of things you need to consider when choosing the images you want to use to get this double exposure effect. First and most important is choosing the source image, in this case the head and shoulders of this particular person. Now this works best when you've got a profile shot, so you've got a side on shot and you want to get something with a clean background so we can take all that distraction away. Now this is a pretty good starting point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and select that. The next thing you want to make sure of is when you're dealing with the image you want to use as the second exposure, as you can see in this one, we've got a sky that's pretty white and high contrast in comparison to the rest of the image. This is going to give you that nice difference between the lighter areas in the image that you kind of see straight through so there's nothing there, and the second part of it where you've got the texture and the shape and form of the mountains. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your images, otherwise it can be quite frustrating trying to get a good result. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go through now and make a selection of the profile picture. Lots of ways you can do that and I'm not too bothered about making this a perfect selection because you're not really going to see too much of it. We just want to get that isolation. So for this example, I'm going to just use the quick selection tool, which I could press W on the keyboard. And I'm just simply going to increase the size of my brush and I'm going to set that with the left and, white, left and right square brackets. And then we're just going to go over the image to get a decent selection. Now I missed a little bit on the end of the nose, so I'm just going to reduce the size of my brush and just go and add that in there. There we go. So I'm not bothered about the hair section, that doesn't really matter, you're not even going to see that. So this is the first part, we've created our selection. All I'm going to do now is promote that to its own layer, so I'm going to press Control or Command J on the keyboard. You can see that now creates a new layer with just our selection, or just our image on this. So I can now get rid of the background image, throw that away, and you can see we've got our isolated layer. Next thing I want to do is just make this a little larger so we can have some more space in front of the portrait. So I'm just going to use the crop tool, I'm simply going to grab the right hand side, expand that out, and just lift the top area up ever so slightly to give us a bit more headroom when we put our image in there. Once I've done that, I'm going to click on the little tick at the top, that's now increased the size of our artboard. So we've done that, let's now move on to the next stage. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I'm just going to rename this layer to Man, so we know exactly what it is we're dealing with. And now I'm going to create a new layer which I want for the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to an adjustment layer, and we're going to come in and we're going to choose Solid Color. Make sure that white is our selected color, and click OK, and then just reorder these, we drop that down behind the man. So we've now got a nice solid white background color. Next up, we're going to jump over to our second exposure image, and we're going to just choose the Move tool, and we're going to drag that over and drop it onto our image. And there we go. So let's just zoom out a little bit, and let's just press Control or Command T to allow me to resize this and reposition it on the image. Now, I'm not too bothered at the moment, because we're probably just tweaking on this in a, in a bit, but that'll do. Press Enter when I've finished. So we've got everything set up there, and I just need to put that layer above our man. I'm going to rename that to Second Exposure. And once we've done that, we're going to change the blend mode for this second exposure image from normal to screen. And you can see now we're starting to get somewhere. So let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're working with. There's a couple of things I want to do. I'm going to turn off the second exposure second, and we're just going to go to the man layer, and we're going to set that to be black and white. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that, and the easiest way is just to, just to come up to Image, Adjustments, and choose Desaturate. That'll desaturate it and create a black and white image. Switch back on our color image, and we're going to do a couple of things with our second exposure now. So let's move this around now so we can make sure we can find a nice composition that works really well. So I'm going to make sure I've got the second exposure limit uh, level selected, layer selected, sorry. I'm going to drag this over until we can find something that really does sort of start to look pretty cool. Okay, I'm kind of liking that because I'm finding the sort of mountain range there is kind of forming part of the head. I want to make sure that the eye shows through there with the trees, so a little bit of a tweak 
just to position it roughly where I want. That's looking pretty cool. So the next thing we want to do now is get rid of the color in this. And we're going to go through like we did the last time. But instead of using the desaturate option, we're going to go through and we're going to create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to set this to black and white. And once we've done that, we're going to change that from being a normal layer, adjustment layer. We're going to right click and choose create clipping mask. So now that's only going to affect the second exposure, the mountain exposure. And what we're also going to do is we're going to make sure that that layer is selected. I'm going to come down and choose high contrast blue filter. And you can see that kind of creates a nice subtle effect in there. Now we've got a couple of things I want to deal with. If we take a look at the sort of top of the mountains, you can see we've got a little hint of the cloud showing through. If I zoom in, you'll see what I'm talking about a little better. And they don't really look that great. So there's a couple of ways we could deal with that. If we wanted to, we could just easily mask that out and get rid of those. Alternatively, what we can do is create another adjustment layer. For this example, we're going to choose a levels adjustment layer. Do the same again. We're going to right click and choose create clipping mask. So it's only now affecting the second exposure. And we can grab the white point on the right hand side and we can just tweak that ever so slightly. Don't want to go too crazy, but you see once we make that slight alteration, we're now saying that anything that goes beyond that point is no longer going to be visible. So the white point ends at there. So anything that was over on the right hand side there now will become completely white. So anything that's sort of like lighter gray area, if I pull it back over, you'll see what I'm talking about. You see those clouds because they're very, very pale gray. We're just moving them over to the left hand side to get rid of those completely. If you want to bring a bit of the contrast back in there, you can grab the midpoint and you can drag that over to the right hand side just to give us a little more contrast in everything. So let's zoom out so we can see what we're talking about. So you can see now we've got the second exposure. We've got a nice sort of crop off at the top where those clouds were and we've got some detail in the face and so on. So that's looking pretty good. Now, what you could also do at this point is if we find that the image itself, the underlying portrait image is looking just a little bit flat and dull, we could, if we wanted to, come into the man layer, do like we did earlier on, which is select a new adjustment layer and choose curves. And in there, we're going to make sure we do exactly the same. So right click on there, we're going to choose create clipping mask, which is only going to affect the man layer. And now what we could do is we can easily come in there and we can put a simple S curve in to boost the highlights and the shadows and you can see that's now only affecting the man portion of the image if i want to i can grab this bottom left hand point and i can bring that up to create a sort of pseudo matte effect which will sort of take the black point of that particular part of the image and take it from being black to a dull gray which kind of look, works pretty cool with this so let's take a look at before take a look at after so it now looks a little bit more stylized so i quite quite like that so we could leave it at this point if we wanted to, but there's one other thing I think will make this image just a little bit more interesting. If we come down to the background layer, everything at the moment is completely white outside the image. But what we can do is we can double click on this, bring up the color picker, which allows us to choose a different color for the background layer because it's an adjust, it's a layer in its own right. We can adjust and tweak that. So instead of leaving it at white, which basically means that we see nothing of anything above it, we can bring that down and introduce it to a lighter gray. And you'll find that once we start to do that, part of the underlying background image starts to show through, which looks pretty cool. So we now end up following that sort of ridge line across the top of the head, bringing in a little bit of interest into it. So that's probably a little too much. Let's just take that up ever so slightly. So it just suggests that sort of continuation line. And we can click OK to that. Now, obviously, we've got a little problem. We've got a little bit of the image cropped off on this side because we don't have enough background image, and we can crop down to that in a moment. So let's just do that now. Just to make sure we don't have any distractions like that on there. So once we're happy with that, we click on the little check mark. So we've now got rid of that. And one final thing, if we come right up to the top layer and we just click to add a new adjustment layer, and this time we're going to choose a gradient map. Now, don't worry, this kind of makes everything look a little bit crazy at the moment. It looks like a negative, which isn't what we want. But what we're going to come and do is we're going to set the colors that we want for this. So if I just double click on the gradient, you can see that brings up the option for the gradient editor. So now we can choose a foreground and a background color. So to do that, we just simply come to the bottom chip on the left hand side, double click on that, and that'll bring up the option to choose the color that we want. So let's go for something like kind of pale blue. And then on the right hand side, we come into there and we'll choose something like a, a yellowy green kind of color. Now this is entirely up to you how you do this. This is kind of a little bit OTT, 
and we'll click OK. So that's kind of got like a bit of a stylized uh, sort of screen print effect. But once we change the blend mode on this, you'll find that that'll just bring in a suggestion of color into the underlying image. So what we're going to do is make sure that layer is selected and we're going to come up to the blend mode. We're going to change that and we're going to put it to soft light. And you can see once we do that, it takes away the strong emphasis of the color. But if we take a look at a before and after, you can see it just adds a little bit of extra something to that image. And that's all there is to it. There's a lot of steps in there, and I'd recommend taking your time going through this. And like I say, choosing the images to work with, making sure that you kind of meet those criteria to get the best end result. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.